What in the world is going on? Look at this awesomeness. Anyway, what's up everybody? Yes, my name is Russ with rwgresearch.com and today I finally got to a point where I'm ready for the next step. So this video series, welcome by the way, this is the part 8 of the Zero Electric Motorcycle which you just saw sitting over there. So I've been waiting on stuff, but one of the things I haven't done very well in this project is sit down and explain to you the math behind some of the gearing, some of the ratio, the torque, the power, and trying to like actually teach you something about the electrical side of this bike. I've kind of just left that out. So in this video, I'm going to actually be talking about the gear ratio, the horsepower, the curves, everything I can sort of remember because it's been several months since I did all those calculations and I'm going to show them to you because I think that's really a good part of the process. Now along the way, this originally had a 15 tooth gear, it has a 70 tooth in the back. That's somewhere around 4.66 gear ratio I believe uh, to one. So what I did is I got a 28 tooth uh, gear for the front and that gives me about a 2.5 uh, to 1 ratio so it changed it by almost half um, and I knew I'd get somewhere where I thought I wanted to be at a higher speed but I didn't quite get there because it wasn't quite enough to beat the wind factor so the amount of wind hitting me the wind resistance is right there at that threshold so it'll actually slowly creep up to 50 mile an hour and it would probably keep going if I had a long enough run and uh, that doesn't really help me. I need it to go like go. So what I did is I bought a slightly smaller tooth, uh, 22 tooth, which is what I'm going to be showing you at the end of this video, is the 22 tooth sprocket runs. Don't have quite as much data on the screen. That was pretty sophisticated last video. But what I am going to show you um, is where I'm at at the end of this video on the speeds. Um, spoiler alert, it's about the same. But I've increased the torque. So the torque is now nice up to that max RPM, feels real good, it's still good at the low end, everything's happy. So let's um, jump into the actual information. I gotta write it up on a whiteboard and do it for you. I may even be having a different outfit because I'm just recording the intro now. So, Merry Christmas, by the way, just so you know. However, before we get to that, this I've been waiting for in the mail. It finally came. And what is this, you ask? Well, I told you guys that I bought a different style BMS management system so I could monitor each cell in my battery pack. I told you that, and I ordered one, and I told you it was like 30 bucks, and this is what I got. I realized I ordered just a piece of the kit. That's why it was only 30 bucks. Silly me. So I got myself a really nice 100 amp contactor, which I'll probably use for charging, so that's fine. But yeah, I had to reorder this and wait another month, so this took two months to get, and here it is, it's finally here. So before we talk about the gear ratios and crap, let's just open this box, because this is part of the series. I actually have not opened this yet. I'm surprised it's still made it. There's stuff hanging out of the side. Hopefully the rest of it's in there. But basically, I want to monitor each cell in my battery so I don't kill an individual row of cells. And so, that's what this is. This will do the trick for me. I was going to make one of these from scratch and realize it would cost me a lot of money and time and effort. And so, uh, I just found this one finally, which apparently was semi-developed by some individuals on a form somewhere. And then made in China. Imagine that. So, here is the... Uh, Module, so why is this uh, important the way I got this? It's time for the announcement. Okay. okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh my god! Santa here? I know him. I know him. That's how you do that. All right, before we get too far into this and get into the math and looking at other things, I kind of want to just give you a visual of the different sizes of the sprocket. So the one that's on here is a 22 tooth. You can see how it kind of fits in here and how it looks. 
Here's a 15 tooth. You're supposed to go in there like this. You can see the difference. It's a massive difference when just looking at it. And then the 28 tooth, it takes up literally the entire area. It's huge. So uh, to answer a quick question on the guide chain and another question about um, somebody, well actually a few people thought that I was using, using my little rig right here to do the uh, tensioning. Uh, but that's actually not true. Sorry about the footage there. What's happening is if you look at the angle of the chain, you can see it's going straight back and then it's going down. All right, let's try that again. So now you can maybe see it a little better. You can see how this here is at a different angle when it comes back down to the big sprocket. So with this big gear, you can tell there's no way that I could do that without the chain hitting. So that's the reason that I made this right here is because the chain will actually hit the frame down here. Now when I had the big sprocket on there and this thing was sitting on the stand here, what I noticed is when I set it on the ground it moved up. So the pivot point between here and here is different. Right? So the swing arm pivots and the chain is a different slack it's not tight whenever it's on the ground. So what was happening was it was actually hitting up there. Oh, but it would only do it um, occasionally when it bounced. Then after I got it kind of fixed up, then it started hitting on the side. All right, right here on this edge because the chain would go back and forth and it would hit. So basically what happened um, from the factory is they installed this bracket and this bracket to do two things. One, they could keep the um, tension on the belt a little, little loose and it would guide the chain back onto the big sprocket as it went forward. And then here, this just probably kept it from just slapping around as it came back on. So I, I had to machine this down and move this over um, for whatever reason to get that to work. And some of you guys saw that this bracket was very wobbly. Uh, I fixed that by adding this washer and pulling it back towards the back. So that's actually how this one actually stays on here. In case you're wondering, the way that the factory actually did this is they made this plate to try to keep the uh, air flowing. And then they basically made this pulley fit in here and you can see it's a pretty tight fit so the chain actually goes right between there and then they pull this up against the actual um, shim that they had on the motor and then that sat against the collar of the shaft itself so instead of relying on the set screws they relied on forcing this into and against the face of the motor shaft which is interesting because when I took this apart the set screw here was never even tight Matter of fact, I didn't take it off. You can see how there's dirt on it on the outside of that outer thread right there. I didn't change anything. They had never tightened the set screw because they were relying on the pressure. And because this does not have regenerative braking, there's no back pressure to knock this thing back and forth all the time. It's always being pulled in the, in the forward direction. It's kind of an interesting design change. Also note, this is a three-quarter inch shaft uh, sprocket and that's a 19 millimeter shaft so there's a f tiny tiny little bit of play so they relied on the axial flatness of everything in order to keep this square so the new pulley rides true and smooth and it's round and it's beautiful alright now it's time we are going to move this stuff out of the way and we are going to look at the data sheets alright so I did do a lot of thinking and and calculation and trying to figure out you know what really to do proper to make this thing work so here's the motor you can see it's a 19 millimeter shaft so my three-quarter inch um, my three-quarter inch and their three-quarter inch sprocket sometimes I call them pulley sorry they're sprockets um, basically there's a little slack there anyway kinda interesting there's also a little rib here which then everything gets pulled against the actual face of that which is machine true which keeps all the other items true on the uh, shaft here so anyway so here's the deal this motor can run from anywhere between 24 and 72 volts I know this is kinda hard to see I'll uh, I'll make it a little bigger here in a little bit 
Let's just do this for now. So it'll run anywhere from 24 to 72 volts. Now my motor controller is maxed out at 60 volts. So in order for get to get a full charge at my battery voltage of around 48, which actually mine sits at 52, uh, basically I have to um, um, keep the controller happy, which means I can't go over this. So in order for me to get up to 72, which is actually ideal because I can get the maximum amount of power out of this guy, I'd have to add a whole nother battery pack. Uh, I added two into my bank. I need to add one more to get up to uh, this higher voltage. So ultimately this would be the best place to be, but there's no room for the batteries in a factory setting and I kind of wanted to keep it factory. So we're back down here right right above here and somewhat below here. So 52 volts is where we're at. So um, yeah, there's a little data. Let's look at a different sheet here. All right, so you can see here what's going on. Uh, I had to use my phone because my printer's not working, so sorry if the clarity isn't quite as nice as it should be. Um, so basically you can see here we got 48 volts, we got the power, we got the RPM. So the RPM at 48 volts is right around 2200 right there. So that's an important number to know. Then the torque is 20 newton meters. The inductance is 0 0.019 millihenry, 16 mega ohm of resistance. Actually that's milli ohm, sorry. And then um, yeah, short duration, you can run uh, 200 amps through it for 10 minutes, and the, the peak uh, on the torque is 38 newton meters. All right, so this graph gives us a little more information. So we have the efficiency curve, we have the mechanical power output curve, we have the speed curve, and we have the torque curve. Okay, so the torque is in newton meters. Uh, this is the amps. And over here we have the uh, watts. So you can see what's happening here is around 20 amps is where they're starting and the efficiency peaks somewhere around here which is about 60 amps. That's where we get our maximum efficiency at. However, um, looking at the speed, the torque, and the mechanical power out, um, the faster we go the efficiency is still really pretty decent all the way up until we get to about 160 amps and drops below 90 percent maybe 140 to 160. So the thing here to remember is is the faster we're moving okay the more RPM basically the torque is going to go up and also the mechanical power is going to go up because the RPM times the torque is our mechanical output. That's actually our horsepower. So at a dead stall, we have zero horsepower even though we have a ton of torque. And theoretically, the DC motors like this will put out maximum torque at all speeds. Here we can see the torque does change a little bit. Um, however, the mechanical power is quite linear in this particular graph. So that's something we need to remember. In case you're wondering, here is the um, the graph for 72 volts, you can see that the efficiency is even greater and everything else is even greater. The efficiency stays pretty good all the way up all the way up to maximum amps, 200 amps here. So if we could get up to 72 volts, we'd get the best out of our system, but we need more batteries, which is more weight, which is more everything, and then ultimately it starts to balance out at some point for distance per charge, etc but we'd have a lot more speed out of it, that's for sure. All right, and lastly here, we're looking at the, um, the speed and the newton meters. All right, so we're, we're in between the 48 and the 60. When the battery is loaded, it really drops down a little bit, so we could, we could say we're around 50 volts, let's say under a nice heavy load, 51 to 52 under a, a medium or mild load. Um, so you've got the torque in newton meters, you've got your volts, all right, 48, and then your torque, and then your RPM is actually what you're seeing here. These numbers are the RPM down here. The torque is for the graph. All right, but what we can see here in this graph is that uh, the speed, right, slowly decreases as the torque increases uh, to a maximum of 38 newton meters. So we can we can see we got 2,000 RPM where we start out at uh, 23. 35. 
So we can stick with a number, a max number of maybe uh, 3500 because we're sitting at a little higher voltage under, a, under less of a load. So we'll call it uh, 2500 RPM. All right, my, wow, my pencil over here has gone crazy, scribbly. Anyway, so at 48 volt, at uh, let's say 52 volt, we're around 2,500 RPM. Okay, so these are our two numbers, and we could all we could go all the way down to 2,000 RPM under our uh, basically under our maximum torque here. So we're gonna go from 2,000 up to 25. Hundred. All right, these are where our calculations are going to be between these voltages, really 46 and 52. All right, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I also want to remind you that the back gear is 72 teeth, and then we we have a original factory gear of 15 tooth. I added a 22 tooth, and then also tried the 28 tooth. So I went uh, to the extreme just to see kind of where we were and whether or not that was okay. And then I kind of guessed that I'd probably have to get a smaller one, but I really wanted to try basically whatever the maximum I could get in that particular area on the bike, which was pretty well 28, almost too big. 26 probably is a real maximum. So right now we're at 22, but we're going to look at the calculations for each one of these and see where we're at on our calculation for max um, basically miles per hour. Alright, using this handy dandy online calculator uh, I can put in the uh, motor speed, the motor sprocket, the wheel or axle sprocket, the tire height. So we have a 24 inch tire right at about the outside. Okay, um, So that 24 inches is our tire, sprocket, motor sprocket, and then our motor speed and it'll give us the, the uh, miles per hour and the gear ratio. I wrote down the gear ratios earlier. Uh, I screwed up. I told you guys in this one right here that I had a 72 tooth. It's a 70 tooth. My fault. Um, so if we just look at the data between 2000 and 2500 RPM we get somewhere between 30 miles an hour. Okay, So somewhere between 30 miles per hour and 38 miles per hour per hour. This is from the factory, and this is with our voltage between um, let's say 46 and 52. Now the factory battery was actually slightly higher voltage, um, so we'd be still in this ballpark from my guesstimate here. The gear ratio of 70 to 15 is 4.66 to 1. So the next thing we'll do is we'll look at the 22 tooth. So the 22 tooth. All right, is about 45 mile an hour to 56 mile an hour, depending where we're at in this range. Um, the ratio is 3.18 to 1. And then if we look down here at the bottom data, this is my big old giant 28 tooth. It's a 2.5 to 1. It's between 57 and 71 mile an hour. Now, these numbers here in this entire paper that I wrote is with no wind resistance, with no friction, with nothing, nothing of that sort, okay? And what's important to know about this equation that we're looking at, all right, is two things. One, we didn't calculate the wind resistance, right? No wind re resistance calculation. We didn't calculate the resistance of the battery, okay? So this factor and this factor plus the uh, mechanical loss, okay? mechanical loss. You add all these up and you get the result that we saw in my video. I could only get about 45 to 50. Max it was at 49 on my uh, GPS. Okay, that's it. That's all I could get out of it. So the torque just wasn't enough with all the wind and battery and everything else. So you got to remember, all right, you got your motor and then you got your battery. The motor is a resistor, okay? And then the battery, all right, that's a great looking battery. This pencil is weird. I've never drawn with such a fat pencil. thought you could see it better. It's also a resistor. Now, you do have your motor controller here, which does have some small losses in it. But ideally, right, you're dumping resistors 
and you're shorting them out. You're shorting out the battery through the motor controller into the motor. So what you have to calculate here is the maximum amount of power that you're going to be able to get into this motor is whatever you can drop across these resistances, right? So the internal battery resistance, believe it or not, is actually super critical here for a maximum output power. That's why the original battery was designed the way it was designed. It had huge leads on it and it was really interestingly built. Um, the internal battery resistance is fairly low, but where I get a lot of my resistance in this current setup is actually the connections between the actual battery cells. So this between the cells is a resistance, okay? So the motor calculations that I'm showing you, um, oh yeah, okay, well, I don't have the papers to do on my phone, try to print it out, it didn't work. But the calculations that I'm showing you are a specific motor resistance. So we have to rely on their calculated uh, and tested battery resistance or power supply resistance in order for us to achieve these exact same parameters. So what's interesting is the reason I went to such a big toothed gear just right off the bat is because I really wanted to know um, what this thing could really do at exactly what I wanted to throw at it. So I threw the biggest one on there and we definitely couldn't reach this. We were really only reaching about 2,000. So um, in our efficiency curve, you know, we weren't in a real good place. We're better to just let everything try to balance out and uh, not overheat the battery by trying to pull too much, by trying to go too fast. It's just, it's just a bunch of heat loss and it's a wasted effort. So I ended up here and this is really good. I really like the way this is um, because you got to remember because I'm only at 2000 RPM, right? Um, my torque, right? Which is a uh, speed, uh, it's speed times torque uh, times 55 something or another. I don't know the equation off the top of my head, but then that equals the, uh, the horsepower or the watts. All right. So in my calculation, I was able to get roughly, or in my real test, I was able to get right at about 5,000 or 5 kilowatts, 5,000 watts, all right, which on this chart is right between here. So I was, I was able to get that amount of power through my system. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of explain this to you because it is important to let you guys know that I went through all the calculations and I tried to go to the extreme. Um, their original bike definitely didn't go fast enough for me to drive on the road uh, safely. I need to be at least in this 45 to 50 mile an hour range, which is where I'm at with the 22 tooth. Now, the cool thing is, is with this new charger, uh, or I shouldn't say charger, but with this new BMS, I can actually see the current from the shunt here and uh, the voltage and the watts and the state of charge and everything all with this little single battery management system um, which you'll get to see more in a later future video when I start working on this but this is important so enough talking let's go just drive this thing and I'll show you what happens yeah spoiler alert I'm in this area um, I think it was really windy that day that I drove it so, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind when you watch this video, but enjoy. I'm going to get off to the other side. It, it rides so good. Look, it's only pulling like a few amps, if that's accurate. It looks accurate. All right, my first dirt ride. <laughs> Oh man, we're gonna go play over there on the road we were at last time and just see what kind of top speed we can get out of it. It should go about 55 with nothing, with no uh, no other uh, uh, problems, no other wind resistance or mechanical resistance or anything. It sure feels like it runs a lot better. It sounds like it runs a lot better with this gear. I can feel the top end has a lot more torque than what it did previously. Oh, my first dirt ride. That was fun. Well, with the new setup, anyway. It 
This thing does have a lot of torque. Great. <clears throat> All right, here we are again. I don't have the uh, camera mounted on here. I'm just gonna see what we can get while looking at it like this. Beautiful mountains again, nice clouds. And hopefully my camera doesn't cut out with the mic because it's been acting a little funny. So here we go. A lot more torque. I can feel the top end better. Definitely has a torque. See if it'll go up this hill right here. No problem. No problem. Enough to throw me off. Ooh, it actually pulled me straight. Dang, that thing's got some acceleration. Really does. So it pulls like maximum amp. And then once it gets to the actual RPM, the effort, well, I wasn't going to get the end.
actually really good. <coughs> I can't quite get those brakes to slide. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I replaced the tires. Oh, about high sided me. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Oh, this ain't got four toys. Look at that. Holy crap. Right in the horse poop. I stepped in it. Good marks. Try to stay out of the horse poop, shall we? A little further this time. Oh, that was good. That speedo is lagged really bad, so it doesn't really know the real speed. This is fun. See, I'm gonna change the tires, so. <laughs> oh, I was on a rock. Look at that. I slid right on a rock because it felt really loose. Okay. Go back. Screw me off. This thing really has got to go. It's awesome. I like this gear. A little bit higher speed. go let's just take it easy I need to almost hold that so I can do both at the same time so if I can keep my battery voltage up and get my speed out of it then I'll build me a ramp curve that suits be comfortable like below 30 or 40 amps and then I can switch a switch and put it into high gear or low gear That's a real number. So 45 at 80 amps. Let's go back because we're going against the wind. Let's see how how much different it is. See if I can go up this. Last time I sat right here, full throttled it. It wouldn't really go up it. Oh, that time it did. Dang, it did burn out. Think I can burn out if I just sit against there. All right. See, if I do this, I'll do this before I ruin the tires. Wait 
for these cars to go by. Oh, well, it looks like it's still working 70%. My battery dropped really fast. Alright, I'm going to try it. Let's see if it works. Dead stop. Nope. They were rocks over there. That's why she spun. I bet if I got the tire going, it would, though. Alright, well, that's successful, then. We'll see how she starts off the line. Lily, this thing rips. This thing rips. Alright, that was cool. What'd you ask me? What are you doing in this place? Why did I ask you do not ride it? I can't ride it in this place? Which way is the long way? That way! You do this and then you turn and then go to church! Really? Yeah! I probably could make it That's to church. Far. I can make it to church on this. Just wouldn't be able to get back. Okay, do it! Which is, which is the short way that I can't do? Then! Don't do nothing with that anymore. Wh which way is the short way? Where am I going? Get up! And then you drive in there! Come on! Come on! You can't! There you go! Now what? He just has to... No, you still go that way. You turn this way. I gotta turn this way? Then we can't open nothing, but I can open the garage door. You gonna open my garage door? Yep. Okay, go open it. All right, well that's the end of that. What a lot of yakking and yakking. I hope you enjoy the video though. I hope you learned something. I hope you realize kind of why I did things the way I did things and just, uh, yeah. I don't know, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. If it was this was boring to you or if it was still interesting, I'd like to know. It's fun to know what you guys think about these videos. Um, I just realized something. So, originally, um, if you guys remember my little black moped that I souped up, uh, that thing was freaking awesome, my hot rod. I uh, actually gave that away to one of the guys that helped me move uh, states a while back because I blew it up. Actually, a piston ring came off. No, I'm sorry. A bearing, needle bearing, fell out of the thing, went through it, blew it up. Anyway, the point is, is on that, if you remember, I had a phone attached to the front. It, it didn't have cell service or anything, but it had GPS, so I could detect the speed. Well, I want to do the same thing, but um, which you'll see in the future, I bought this so I could monitor the battery. And I originally wanted to build my own so I could integrate it into my iPhone or Android or whatever I slap on the front of this thing to get my speed because it doesn't have factory speed. So what's really cool, I didn't realize this until just now, but on this, which you'll see more of this in the future, there's a COM2, that's for the battery. Actually, no, that's for the, uh, the unit, the head unit. And you can also program the settings in there. COM1 is for a battery charger of their model so that they can talk back and forth. And uh, the last one is COM3. Right there. There's a COM3. Now COM3 sends out all of the data that goes, or most of the data, that goes to this little screen here. And basically you can use it to do other things with it. So at my current job, I've actually used the BeagleBone Black and got it to talk to an iPad or any Android device, sorry, any Apple device, like an iOS device, and I can talk back and forth using a 
a protocol called Peer Talk back from the uh, nine, uh, from 2012. So it's pretty old, but it works. So what I can do is actually grab the data from that and spit it out into some other device that I can connect to this and make it work, which is like really cool. Uh, that's a long-term goal. First step is just getting that thing connected. So in the next videos, we'll probably be playing with that. I don't know what else I got going on. I filmed a bunch of stuff, so anyway. This video is long enough. I hope you enjoyed it. God bless you guys, as always. Read the Bible more, and uh, yeah, be one with your Heavenly Father. Love you guys. Peace out.